What's going on guys? Alex here and today we're going to talk about the LA City Business Tax. Now this is a tax that takes taxpayers by surprise all the time because it's taken care of separately from the income tax returns that are filed for a business, let's say an LLC in California. So once that's done, the majority of business owners say, okay, we're good. But the LA City business tax oftentimes comes back to haunt them later on because it's often overlooked. So we're going to find out what the LA City business tax even is. Then we're going to talk about a common misconception associated with the LA City business tax. So make sure you don't trip over that one. And aside from that, we're going to talk about the business tax registration certificate or BTRC. And we're going to talk some exemptions on that tax. So there are some exemptions that are applicable and there are situations in which you may not be subject to the tax for some or all of the gross receipts that you receive in a particular year. But we're going to cover that. We're going to get technical later on. So right now we're just going to keep it pretty simple. We're also going to look at the process of applying for the business tax registration certificate because that's going to be the first step in stepping into this wonderful world of L.A. City business tax. Now, what even is it? All right. The L.A. City business tax is a gross receipts tax for businesses, right? So if you're an employee and you get a W-2, this does not apply to you. But if you're self-employed, let's say as a sole proprietor, if you have a single member LLC, a partnership, an S corporation doing business within the limits of L.A. City, then in many cases, you'd be subject to the L.A. City business tax. Now, I mentioned that it's based on gross receipts. What does that mean? So if your business takes in $200,000 in L.A. City, that would be the number you use for gross receipts more often than not. And your expenses do not play in to the gross receipts number. So you might say, well, I took in 200000 but my expenses were 100000 so I really netted 100 I should pay taxes on that, right? Well, that's not exactly how it's set up. It's based on the gross receipts number. So in the example that I mentioned, you'd be looking at that $200 starting figure to calculate the tax since it's a gross receipts tax, right? Now, we're also going to cover what the rates look like, and we're going to get into a little bit about the categories that are applicable to the LA City business tax. So we're going to cover all that, but I just wanted to give a brief breakdown of what we're even talking about here before we get into the nitty gritty details. Now, let's find out where we could learn more about the LA City business tax. Now, you can start off with good old Google and just type in LA City business tax. All right. And the City of Los Angeles Office of Finance comes up and this is a good starting point. Not my favorite website in the world, but it does have some some good information. And you'll find out about all those different categories. If you go onto online services, you have some finance areas here and so forth. So they do pack the information into the site. Not the greatest, but a lot of the info is there for you. So if you're talking about the rates that are applicable to business tax in the city of Los Angeles, they do have a site for that. And it's basically finance.lacity.org. Now, there are different rates that are applicable. And as you can see here, they have a gross receipts rate and a non-gross receipts rate table. So the tables more often that my clients are going to use since they're service-oriented businesses, they're attorneys, doctors, and so forth, is the tax rate table to the left here being the one applicable to gross receipts. Now, the non-gross receipts tax tables I could show you here, they're not applicable to common situations that at least I deal with in my practice, but you can take a look over here. There's amusement parks, billiards, adult arcade, music machines, adult cabaret. You know, this is not your everyday uh, situation here. So that being the case, if you're a service-based business and you're operating in LA City, you're probably looking at the gross receipts rate table. Let's take a look at that one and get an idea of what these rates are. Now, when you're looking at this, the important thing to consider First off, of course, is the category, right? So if you're looking at where you fall in in terms of these classes, that's going to be a starting point for determining your rate. And you'll see that the rates here are based on per thousand dollars of gross receipts. OK, so that's going to be the important number that you use. So in our example of two hundred thousand you would divide that by 1,000, so you'd get 200, and then you multiply it by the applicable rate. 
Now, you'll also see that there's a good breakdown of the different categories that may be applicable right here on this website. And if we look, we can see that professions and occupations businesses, the rate is 4.25 per thousand or fractional part thereof of gross receipts. So in our example, 200,000, divide that by a thousand, you have 200 and multiply that by 4.25. That's going to be the tax applicable for that business for the year. Again, the expenses do not play into it. And you can see here, it says that persons engaging in more than one trade, calling, occupation, vocation, profession, or other means of livelihood covered in this section shall constitute all gross receipts and shall be issued one business tax registration certificate covering all such service activities. So what, you're, what they're saying is that if you are both a doctor and an attorney, I don't know how common that is, but hey, you know, anything can happen, then you can lump those together so that you're filing under one service-based business and it's one business tax registration certificate. You don't need it for all your various different activities. So there's a, a bit of flexibility there. But in essence, you would essentially be using the rate of L049 if you're falling into the category of the service-based business and you're using basically this category professions and occupations businesses and that's the most applicable to your business out of all these other ones and you can see every single category has a different rate associated with it so you want to make sure that you are objective in terms of where your business falls in and apply the applicable rate so that gives us an idea of what the rates are and how they're calculated and i did want to cover one misconception that is happening pretty much every day in LA city. So you'll have a business owner and they are operating as a sole proprietor and they file their schedule C with form 1040 and they feel like they're all set. They paid some taxes to California and it feels like you're all done and you're all good. Unfortunately, that's not the case because LA city, if you operated within the city wants their piece. Another example, let's say an individual has an LLC that they're operating in LA city and they file the particular form for that LLC and they feel like they're all well and good because they took care of it. It's all well and done. Unfortunately, that's not quite the case because you're still going to have to take care of LA city taxes separately being that it's not essentially an income tax. It's more of a business tax. That being the case, it's not handled on the income tax return. So if you have a preparer preparing your returns, Make sure that if you're doing business in L.A. City, that they are taking care of the L.A. City business tax portion for you. If not, make sure you take care of it separately. So make sure that you're on the same page because I see a lot of misunderstandings happen in this area where the client believes that the L.A. City business tax is taken care of and the preparer may or may not be taking care of it based on how their practice is structured. So definitely stay on top of this because the penalties can add up pretty quickly. The other thing is... I hear from clients all the time, ah, how are they going to figure out that I'm doing business here, right? They, they try to skirt the tax and they feel like they're just going to be able to hide under the radar. That's not a great strategy. And the way that LA City stays on top of this is they look at your Schedule C. Oh, you filed a Schedule C? Okay, the address on your Form 1040 is in LA City. There's a good chance you're doing business in LA City. And they'll take the federal information. They'll take the Schedule Cs that you filed. They'll cross-reference that to their database of business tax registration certificates. And if they see that there isn't one, bam, you get a nasty gram in the mail and then you have to deal with it. And LA City is not pleasant to deal with, I can tell you that. When people say they dislike the IRS, I tell them you should try dealing with LA City. I think you'll appreciate how kind the IRS tends to be towards taxpayers. So that's a little bit of background there, how things are structured, talking about some misconceptions. Now, the question then becomes, what's up with this business tax registration certificate that you'll see referenced on the LA City Business Tax website very often? All of this is handled around the business tax registration certificate. And the idea is that once you start doing business within LA City, you go on their website, and I'm going to show you how in a minute. And you register for the business tax registration certificate, BTRC. And once you register for this, you're on their radar and you're able to pay the taxes, but you're also able to take advantage of exemptions that I'm going to discuss as well. Because in particular situations, you may just be 
logging onto the website annually to renew your registration, but you don't have to pay any tax. Even if you had gross receipts from business, that's what these exemptions allow. Okay. So I'm going to cover them at the end of the video. So stick around. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, leave a comment. Let me know what you think and any improvements that we can make to these videos moving forward. Cause I want to make sure we put out the best content for you. All right. With that said, registering for a business, Tax Registration Certificate, BTRC. How do we do it? So if you go to this LA City of Finance website, you go to Online Services, like I'm showing you now, okay? And you'll see that there's a link to register for the Business Tax Registration Certificate, BTRC. That's what we're looking for. So when you're starting a business in LA City, do this before you even start doing business, okay? Get it out of the way. It's not going to cost you anything up front. Very easy to do. It's quick, painless, and you get on their radar, you'll avoid problems later on, all right? So you click on that, and you get to this big yellow monster over here. So it gives you a lot of good information. We're not going to really read this too much now. But essentially, the process is laid out here on the bottom of the page. So let's take a look at what it says there. Let me make sure you guys can see this. All right, so steps to completing a new business online registration. A, new business registration application, okay? Then you get the confirmation, you get a confirmation email, and then you get a temporary tax registration certificate, which basically gives you authority to conduct business within LA City. So they do it around this registration certificate, but when you go to renew it, that's when you pay the tax. So that's why this is all tied together, all right? So, and by the way, we're not covering the legal aspects of whether or not you can do business or not do business within LA City. We're just talking about paying taxes here, right? So I don't know if without a LA City business tax certificate, if you even have the right to do business within LA City. It may be that if you don't have the certificate, you don't have the right to do business. I don't know. I'm not an attorney. I'm a tax guy. So that's what we're going to focus on. So there's a button at the bottom of this site. I want you all to see. It says proceed. We're going to hit that man pajama and see what else we have. All right. Now, for new account verification, it asks us for some information here. Now, I'm going to enter some, some nonsense here. Of course, we're not going to uh, submit this. We're just going to use it for demonstration purposes. So let's put an FEIN. By the way, an employer identification number is also known as an EIN. So if you have one for your business, if you registered for it on the IRS website or you filed form SS4, then you'd have an EIN. If you don't have an EIN, you can enter your social. So if you're just a sole proprietor and you're just doing business, you're starting out, doing whatever you're doing, just pop that social in there. So let's do it like this. Okay, obviously it's a nonsense social. And let's keep going. Now it asks you about your business activities. Some of these are quite interesting, I have to say. I don't know who came up with this stuff, but this is what it is. If you wanna register for a BTRC, this is how it goes. All right, so it asks you, are you in the arts, entertainment, recreation profession, excluding motion pictures? Well, in my case, let's just say no for now. All right, are you in the construction contractors profession? Let's say no. Finance and insurance profession. This is insurance agents, savings and loans. Uh, activities are exempt. Let's just say we are. Okay, fine. Now, food establishments and sales. You read that, it's no. Healthcare, no. Internet service providers, nope. Manufacturing, radio and television, a lot of these categories. Once you've answered yes to one, you're probably answering no to the others, but it can vary. So that's why I think it's important to go through the process. Now, this is kind of tricky here. If you go to the services area, you'll see that this category covers a wide variety of businesses providing professional services. Professional services include persons doing business as an advertising agency, temporary help agency, public relations agency, attorneys, auto mechanics, barbers, gardeners, music teachers, shoe shine stand. I don't know how you go from music teacher to shoe shine stand, but that's what they're doing. Parking lot operator, auctioneer, or any other business activity not described in other business categories. So be careful. If you're in finance and you're doing business here in LA City, make sure you hit the right category because it's easy to miss this one. And then you're jumping straight to Gener generic services. So essentially we're picking the one for finance. So are you in the services profession? And, and this is not described in other categories. We're going with the finance in our example. So we'll, we'll say no. 
And then we have telecommunications and utilities. Are you in the telecommunications and utilities profession? That's a nope. And on the transportation and warehousing profession, sometimes we're warehousing people's tax information because they refuse to pick it up. But aside from that, not really. So we'll hit accept and proceed. Let me just make sure you guys can see all of this goodness. Okay. Next page. More questions. Are you a collection agency? Nope. Do you discount? Do you buy discounted loans for personal gain or profit? That's a negatory. Do you arrange for the lending of money secured by personal property? Not that I know of. Does your business activity consist of mutual fund investments? It does not. If you're investing in mutual funds in tax year 2020, I have some questions for you. But that's a different topic. All right. Now, are you engaged in business as a check cashing service? I like to cash checks, but usually they're my own. So I don't think so. Are you an insurance broker? That's a nope. See next questions. It says, based on the questionnaire answers, we're unable to classify your business. You can double check your answers. Did you mean to answer no to all of the additional business activity questions? So it does not believe us in terms of what we answer. But we said we're in the finance and insurance profession. And we said no to all the others. So let's accept and proceed. Once you answer yes to the finance question, it asks you which one of these finance activities your business qualifies as. So we answered no to all of them, which means that we probably picked the wrong category. So there's some logic built into this. Even if you pick the wrong category, there's going to be some guidance that's going to try to bump you in the right direction. So this is great. I love it. So let's go back. Let's take ourselves out of the finance and insurance category and into the services category, obviously because we don't fit into the definition of finance and insurance. Fine. So we're in services, accept and proceed. All right, so now we have service industry related questions. So they're, they're narrowing it down. This thing has kind of forks in the road as you go through the process. Now, are you in the business of hauling refuse? Not typically, but if you see some of the financial statements and receipts that we get to prepare tax returns, you'd argue that this is applicable, but not so much. I'll, I'll go with no. Uh, are you engaged in business as a temporary help agency? Nope. Uh, travel agency? No. Are you a collection agency? No. Let's see. Are you engaged in business as an advertising agency? No. Aircraft support contractor? Are you engaged in the business of binding books? Where do they get these things? Are you engaged in business as a mailing service? Are you in the business of teaching music? Let's see. Are you engaged as a public relation agency? Are you in the business of operating or maintaining a shoe stand or parlor. Maybe I should consider it. Who knows? Engage the business as a typesetter. Uh, did you auction somebody else's merchandise to the highest bidder? I'm telling you, some of these are weird. Do you own, operate, or maintain coin-operated scales or service machines such as massage chair machines, coin-operated car vacuums? No. Again, this is a really interesting question here. Do you operate a parking lot? No. Do you conduct any services not described as miscellaneous services as well as other business activities not specif specifically taxed by other sections of the business tax ordinance? Some examples are attorneys, dentists, barbers, auto mechanics, handymen, etc. Okay, let's go with yes. And do you sell goods, wares, or merchandise to the end consumer? No. This is a service-based company, let's assume. Let's see next questions. All right, it continues. And I'm not making this up. This is the real application. A police alarm is required if you have an alarm system at your business location within the city of Los Angeles limits. Do you have an alarm? Let's say no. Do you have a public bath or tanning salon? Nope. Are you a card cl club or school? No. Do you give dancing lessons? Nope. Do you provide escort services? Nope. Are you a gunsmith? Do you operate a figure studio? Don't know what a figure studio is, so probably not. Are you a locksmith or do you duplicate keys? No. Do you offer ma massages? Only to my best customers, all right? But let's go with no. I don't charge for them separately. Uh, so are you a peace officer organization? No. Do you provide private patrol? Nope. Shooting gallery? Nope. Skating rink? Nope. Towing operation? Not today. Not today. So let's accept. Do you have a school? Can this YouTube channel be construed as a school? Maybe. It's educational, I guess, but no. 
Is this a surgical center? A hospital? A hospital nursing home? No. Thanks for asking. All right, so we're getting through this thing here. And now it's asking for some more demographic information. So business description, let's just say accounting practice. Okay. You only have so many characters, how many characters, 60 characters. Okay. So don't get too wordy on this one. Legal business name. And this would be, if you have an LLC, your LLC name, or if you have an S corporation, the S corporation name. So if you have a DBA, then you'd enter it separately because it says here, do not use DBA fictitious name here. So if you have an LLC or S corporation, that's the full name you'd drop into that box. And if you have a DBA on top of that that you use, that goes in the box below. So business start date, let's just say 1-1-2020. Business type, let's take a look. All right, so sole proprietorship is when you just start doing business by yourself. You don't form an S corp, you don't form an LLC, you don't have a partnership or anything like that. So you're just operating your own business, you just put up a shingle, start providing services, bam, that's your choice right there. Partnership is when two or more individuals start working in a business enterprise together. So if that's the case, that partnership is the way you go. Corporation, you have to form that corporation at the state level. So that's a business entity that you put together. And if that's what you went ahead and did, that's going to be your business type. Now, Limited liability company is another way to say LLC. So if you have an LLC that you put together, that's going to be your choice. And a trust is going to be, let's say, a trust that you put together that owns a stake in a business. If that's the case, then you'd want to uh, go ahead and check that off. I don't really see that one happening too often, but certainly it is, it is possible. So let's just go sole proprietor. And... One thing that I have to be careful of, if you have an S corporation, the question then becomes, well, do you pick corporation? Or do you pick limited liability company? If you, let's say, had an LLC that you then elected to have treated as an S corp. Let's remember, I said in my prior videos, the S corporation election is an income tax concept. All right. So when you ask about what the nature of your business is at the state legal level, it has to do with how it was originally formed. So if you formed an LLC and then had the S corporation election applied to it, it's still an LLC at the state legal level. So I'd go with limited liability company. However, if you formed a corporation at the state level and then made the S corporation election, it still is a corporation at that state level. Bam, pick corporation. All right. So on top of that, we have all this kind of demographic information, get the address and so forth and location type. You hit commercial location or residence. Pretty straightforward. And it asks you for mailing address as well. And if it's the same as the business address, you hit this box right here. Bam, boom. Transfers all the info for you. Pretty simple. Uh, sales tax number. If you have a sales tax number or seller's permit, enter it right there. And then your business slash professional activity code. And this is something you could search. So, for example, we said that we're, uh, let's see here, other professional services. And here you pretty much can pick a good description or the best description of whatever your, your business happens to be. So let's just take a look. If we talk about accounting offices, we could talk about Office of Certified Public Accounts. We could talk about other accounting services. So let's just pick that for now. Submit. All right. And if you have a secondary activity code, let's say you do multiple things, you drop that into this box right here. And on top of that, you just put in business contact information, filer information, and pretty much you're good to go. And that's really all it entails to get a business tax registration certificate in the city of Los Angeles. And once you have that, then you're essentially able to conduct business and also stay on the radar of the tax side of things because they are going to want their LA city business tax at some point. So keep that in the back of your mind. Make sure you budget for it as well. We don't want that to come up as a surprise for us. Now, at the very beginning of this thing, I talked about some exemptions. Now, wh what are exemptions? Exemptions are opportunities for you to avoid or limit the amount of business tax you end up paying to LA City. Now, two notable exemptions are the creative artist exemption and the small business exemption. You can see them referenced on the website here. Let's look at the creative artist exemption first, okay? This applies to 
quote, creative artists. And of course, the definition is, is really important there. So make sure that if you fall within that category, you definitely fit the description of what a creative artist actually is. And they have some, some frequently asked questions over here that you could reference to make sure that you qualify. But it says that it applies to creative artists who generate up to 300000 in total taxable and non-taxable in-city and out-of-the-city gross receipts attributable to their qualifying creative activities. And important things to note, the creative artist exemption requires that businesses file a timely renewal form. What's that renewal form? The business tax registration certificate. I just showed you how to file it. It's very simple to do. And essentially, you renew on an annual basis. Very quick, very easy. You go on that LA City Business Tax Office of Finance website, renew it, and you're all set. It says here, if the total taxable and non-taxable gross receipts from in and out of the city that are attributable only to creative activities exceed 300000 the exemption does not apply. So it's a cliff, all right? So if you're rocking and rolling, you're going with the creative artist exemption, but bam, your gross receipts exceed that 300000 you don't qualify at all anymore. It's not the first 300000 that qualify. It's zero. Very important. And it says the creative activities exemption is available only to registered businesses and not new businesses. And there are a few more criteria here, but you can hit up the frequently asked questions. Let's just take a look here. And entertainment, creative talent, frequently asked questions. You can see that it does get very much in depth as to what qualifies, what doesn't qualify, and has a bunch of examples. So definitely check that out. So if you're in the creative side of things, that's your business. Make sure you hit that up and see if you qualify for that exemption in any particular year. And it's it's pretty generous, right? Up to 300000 exempt from tax. If we talk about the rate being, let's say, $4 per $1,000 of gross receipts. We're talking about some cash here, you know? All right. The other exemption that I want to talk about is a small business exemption. And it applies to registered small businesses that do not have taxable and non-taxable gross receipts exceeding 100000 from within and out of the city of Los Angeles worldwide. So what they're saying is if the gross receipts as they described do not exceed 100000 then your amount of LA City business tax is going to be a goose egg, zero. The stipulation is that you renew your business tax registration certificate annually. All right, you want to do this right at the end of the year, typically, or right at the beginning of the next tax year. And very important to make sure that that's filed on time. That's going to qualify you for the exemption. Because even if your gross receipts are 60000 and you feel like you qualify, but you don't renew your business tax registration certificate in a timely manner, you don't qualify. So that all the gross receipts are going to be subject to the LA city business tax. Very important. Now, with that said, what is the deadline? So let's see if we can find it easily. Okay. All right. So it's very tricky how they outline this. I think this could be a lot simpler, but in essence, this is the LACityBusinessTax.org website. Let me drop that in the comments for you. And you'll see, or in the chat rather, you'll see that all business entities must pay a city business tax each year or file for an exemption. Business taxes are due on January 1st of each year and are considered delinquent if they are submitted after February 28th. You should receive a postcard or form in the mail in December. All right. So it's very strange, right? Because business taxes are due on January 1st. Who has their accounting done by January 1st? Okay. I still have some clients that don't have their accounting done from 2019. So it's uh, wishful thinking usually to have it done by then. But it says that it would not be considered delinquent until February 28th. So you do have some time there to make sure you submit it timely. And if you qualify for the 100,000 exemption or 300,000 exemption, you need to make sure that you file the LA City business tax renewal timely. Otherwise, they will hit you with the tax on the full amount and the exemption goes out the window. There are some other quirks in terms of how the LA City business tax is calculated. There's a con concept known as back tax, which, uh, you know, once you find out about this is going to kind of blow your mind. But keep that in the back of your mind as well, because if you're going through the calculations for renewing your business tax registration certificate and it seems like the amount of taxes double what you think you'd owe it's because LA is basically taking the first 2 years 
in that first renewal. I know this sounds so strange, and I still can't wrap my mind around it. Who thought of this? What kind of chemicals they were on? Only LA could come up with something like that. But if you're seeing that the rate is double, it's due to that back tax. And you could learn more about it by Googling a bit here. Let me just uh, get the link for you. So back taxes, LA city. All right. All right. So about back taxes for new business activity. I mean, this is infuriating when clients find out about this. All right. So let's just read. When a new business activity subject to tax is started, it is required that the minimum tax be paid with the application. At the end of the first business tax calendar year, it is required that a statement of the first calendar year's gross receipts be filed and payment made of any tax due in excess of that paid at the time of application. This is applicable even if the business activity is terminated during the first calendar year of such activity. The tax for the first and second calendar years are each measured by the gross receipts of the first calendar year. Consequently, the tax for the first and second calendar year is always the same amount. So think about this scenario. You start a business in 2020 and it does okay. Let's say you got you got a million dollars in gross receipts. All right? And for one reason or another, on January 1st, 2021, you decide that you want to terminate the business for whatever reason. You're still, for LA City business tax purposes, going to pay the LA City business tax for two years, even though you're not operating that second year. They're just assuming, based on your first year, that you're going to operate in the second year. It's called the back tax, all right? Absolutely insane. <laughs> so I've never heard of anything so crazy, but LA City, that's what you have to deal with. I did want to mention that just in case you find that your amount of tax calculated is double what you feel it should be. That's why it's the back tax. So hopefully this adds a little bit of color, a little bit of light onto the LA City business tax, the business tax registration certificate, and the fact that you have to renew on an annual basis, the fact that there are exemptions that exist, but they're contingent upon your timely renewal on an annual basis. So hopefully this shed some light on all of this craziness. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon to be notified of future videos. And overall, if you think that the back tax is crazy, leave a comment below and let me know. Okay. Share the love, show the love. It's a beautiful thing. And as always, hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.